Welcome to Cooking with Bobby Joe. Today I'm seasoning a cast iron corn stick pan and then I'm going to make some cornbread in it to see how the seasoning turned out. This was my mom's pan but she gave it to me because she rarely uses it and the corn sticks kept sticking to it. I was just going to season it up for her and give it back to her but she told me I could have it but after this video she may want it back. We will see. Okay so here's the pan and it isn't in bad shape. It just needs a little cleaning and seasoning. I'm just going to use my lodge brush and scrub it down good to get anything stuck in it out. And all I'm using is warm water and Dawn dish soap. Some people say don't use soap on cast iron, but that's dish soap that has lye in it. Most dish soaps today doesn't have lye. Lye will take all the seasoning off a of cast iron. Usually if a cast iron is being completely stripped down and restored, it's put in a lye bath. We don't want to strip this one down. It isn't in that bad a shape. I've got it washed. Now I'm going to dry it. And I have a bunch of these t-shirt cloths that I dry and season my cast iron with. You could take an old 100% cotton t-shirt and cut it up into cloths to use on your cast iron. You can also buy a pack of t-shirt cloths. All it is is t-shirt material cut into squares. And that's what I have. I don't remember when I bought these because I've had them for quite a while, but I got them on Amazon. They came 100 to a pack for like $5, which is a lot cheaper than most t-shirts. And they work really well for this. So I always have a cloth on the counter for drying cast iron and another for seasoning. Some people have a third cloth that's used for wiping off excess oil, but I usually just use my seasoning cloth for that. So when I season my cast iron, I always put aluminum foil down on the bottom rack of the oven to catch anything that may drip down. If you wipe it down good, it shouldn't drip, but I always like to be on the safe side because if oil hits those burners, it's going to start smoking. I preheat my oven to 250 degrees, and some people do lower temperatures, some people do higher temperatures. This is just what always works for me in my oven. Now I'm going to get my seasoning cloth, and it always has oil on it because it's used for seasoning on my cast iron. I'm going to add some Crisco to it, and I'm going to spread that all over the corn stick pan. I do the front, back, sides. I grease the entire pan. And at this point, I don't really worry about the excess Crisco on the pan. What I do is stick it in the oven for about 15 minutes. I give that Crisco time to melt. Now all that Crisco is melted and I get my seasoning cloth and I make sure I get all that melted Crisco down in all the nooks and crannies. I don't want any excess oil in the pan because that will make the pan sticky. You want it greased with no excess oil draining anywhere on the pan. Just like before, I'm wiping down all sides of the pan. And you also want to make sure you do this when you're going to be home for a few hours because when I do this, I let it season in the oven for three and a half hours on 250 degrees. I go with lower temperatures and longer cook times because it keeps it from smoking up my house. Higher temperatures have a tendency to set off the smoke alarm even if I wipe off all the excess grease. I left it in the oven even after I turned off the heat. I think I left it in there for about an hour. It was still warm when I pulled it out. And doesn't that look nice? Now we're going to put it to the test. We're going to preheat the oven to 450 degrees. I've got my bacon grease can and I've got a basting brush. And you can tell that this is warm by the way the bacon grease is melting when it hits it. Now I'm going to brush all the bacon grease into the corn cob shaped molds. I'm also brushing the top of the pan in case it rises more than I anticipate to keep it from sticking. At this point, I want excess grease. Place it back in the preheated oven. I'm going to let that grease and pan heat up while I make my cornbread batter. And I don't have a recipe specific to a corn stick pan. 
It won't take as much as a regular skillet of cornbread, but I'll use what I can in this pan and then whatever batter I have left over I'll do in a skillet. I'm going to need some extra cornbread anyway because I'm sharing this with my in-laws and our friend Lanville. And I'm out of my yellow cornmeal that I always use for my cornbread, so I'm going to have to use white cornmeal and I'm going to change the recipe up a little bit. So for this cornbread recipe, I'm going to mix one egg, one and three-fourths cups of buttermilk, mix that together. Then I'm going to add in a fourth a cup of vegetable oil and mix that. Then in another mixing bowl, I'm going to add two cups of white cornmeal, one tablespoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt. Then add in the wet ingredients and mix everything up. I'm pouring some of this batter into a smaller measuring cup so it's easier to pour into the corn stick pan. I put my baking sheet back on the counter. I make sure I put on my oven mitts and get my pot holders for extra protection. I guess I need some of those heat proof oven mitts. I've never used them though and I've never been burnt. I'm going to remove it from the oven. Hear that sizzle? That's what's going to give it that yummy, crunchy bottom. Okay, the first year are going to be a little bigger because I almost overfilled those. Now I'm going to stick it back in the oven until the tops are golden brown. And then I'm going to put some bacon grease in a skillet and I'm going to stick that in the oven. I'm going to get that ready for the rest of the cornbread batter. Alright, I'll show you all my big pot of pinto beans that I've got cooking. These have been cooking all day long. I had some of that leftover Thanksgiving ham that I took out of the freezer and I put in these beans and it smells so good. While that cornbread's cooking, I'm going to melt some butter. The corn sticks are done, so we're going to pull those out of the oven, and it took about 18 minutes with my oven, but it may be different with yours, so just make sure you keep an eye on them until they are golden brown on top. It usually takes between 15 and 20 minutes. Now I'm going to take my melted butter and brush across the top of the corn sticks. Then I'm going to take a butter knife and go around the edges to make sure they're loosened up before removing the corn sticks. They're popping right up when I go around the edges though. These cook perfectly. See how easy they pop up? Now after this pan cools down a little, I'm just going to run hot water over it and use my lodge brush to clean it up. I won't even use soap on it this time. It should clean right up with the brush and water. Then I'll dry it with my cloth, stick it in the oven for a few minutes to warm up. Then I'll remove it and take my seasoning cloth and I'll wipe it down one more time. I'll make sure there's no excess oil and then they'll be ready to use next time. I love these corn sticks because they are so crispy all around and they're soft inside. I love skillet cornbread too, but I think I like these corn sticks better. They're great for dipping in chili or in your pinto beans. I bet they would be good dipped in chili cheese dip too. And once you have your cast iron seasoned well, then it only takes a few minutes of maintenance after each use to keep it in great shape. And cooking with bacon grease in this corn stick pan also helped it with another layer of seasoning. 
I look forward to using this pan again soon. These corn sticks definitely get the drill worthy stamp of approval. Well, stay tuned Friday for another episode of the Lake Hill City Birds. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a very blessed day.